Welcome to Galilean Baptist Church today. Good to see you this morning. And uh, I'm going to do something a little bit different. Let's go ahead and stand together. That way when Brother Bill comes up, we're already breathing right and ready to go for a song. But uh, we're going to pray and ask God to bless our service this morning. How many of you believe that God has something special for you today? You realize anytime God speaks to you, it's special. We are unworthy. He is the holy God. We are sinful creatures. And when he speaks to us, it's always important and special. And so I am thankful for that. We're going to bow for prayer and ask God to bless our service. I believe he has something for us. Let's seek him for that at this time. Heavenly Father, I thank you that you have given us your word. You have given us your Holy Spirit. And Lord, your Holy Spirit is our teacher and our reminder. He is the guider into all truth. Lord, I pray that we would follow him into all truth. Lord, I pray that we would not put up hindrances or barriers to anything that you'd want to accomplish in our uh, service today. Lord, I pray that you would work in our hearts. Lord, would you please comfort those who are troubled today? Uh, Lord, I can think of a few people off the top of my head right now that are struggling with some things. And Lord, I pray that in the midst of the struggle, they would know that you're with them. And that you would give them strength and power to overcome what they're in. Lord, I pray that you would uh, work in our hearts. Lord, I think that if there's someone here today that is without you as their Savior, I pray that you would save that soul that was without Christ. Yes. I pray that they would find forgiveness of sin. That they would find their completion and spiritual uh, awakening in you today. Lord, those of us maybe who have been saved for a number of years and we've gotten used to it. Lord, would you stir us? Lord, we have lived so long without a true revival that I'm afraid we're reaping the consequences of it. And Lord, not just in our nation, but in families and in individual lives. Lord, we are desperate for revival. We need you. Lord, I believe if we don't find that soon, I'm I am c concerned about the survival of what we know today. Lord, I pray the Holy Spirit would have free course and free reign. May we be very sensitive and obedient to him as he speaks to us today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, let's all turn to page number 144. 144, what a day that will be.
Jesus, Jesus. 
first verse where it says, I care not today what tomorrow may bring. I don't know about you, but sometimes, and a lot of times, I do care about what comes tomorrow. But when we get down to the chorus where it says, I'm living by faith, that's what we have to do is live by faith. No matter what we face, and I always kind of smile at myself when I sing, I care not today what tomorrow may bring. Yeah. I kind of smile at my own self because I do care what tomorrow is going to bring. Amen. But I'm so thankful that I'm trusting someone that I can put my faith in. Amen. Amen. Let's do that second verse now. Though this day
29. One more time, page number 29. How deep the Father's love for us. It's in the superlative. It's in the extreme. There's nothing uh, that is greater than that, and I'm glad to know that there's nothing that can separate me from it. Uh, what a great, great song. I love it. When you think about the day Jesus Christ died on the cross, I want you to know that the most glorious day in history, the day he rose from the dead, was preceded by the darkest day in history. When Jesus died on the cross, there was nothing happy about it. In fact, the entire world went dark for three hours. Yes. That's how sad it was. There was nothing happy about it in that moment. It was a cruel but willing death of the innocent and holy so that people like us, the guilty and the sinful, could be made free. He, nobody took his life. He willingly gave it. That's right. The Bible says that he gave up the ghost. Yep. It was in his timing and his way. People accuse us of having a Bible and a faith that is full of blood. And I don't, I'm not ashamed of that. Amen. I'm not ashamed of it. You see, blood had to be shed because the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission or sending away of sin. He had to die on the cross. He had to die. Jesus had to die. Death was required because the wages of sin is death. Jesus died for you and for me because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. 
It had to be Jesus. God demonstrated his great love toward us by sending Jesus to die for hell-deserving sinners like us. I want you to see in Luke chapter 23, we'll start reading in verse 39. Then I'll give you the title of the message and we'll go into it. Luke chapter 23, verse 39. And let me just say this. I hope you have a Bible with you. If you don't have one, get where you can see one. I want you to see it. The Bible says, and one of the male factors which were hanging or which were hanged railed on him. Time out. Three men are on a cross, on crosses. Jesus is in the middle. On each side is a thief. And one of those that hung on one side of Jesus railed on him, railed on Jesus, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself. And here's his real heart issue, and us. That was really what he wanted to say. Verse 40, but the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. But this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. I have marked in my Bible, this is not the message, but I think it's interesting in verse 43, Today and paradise. What a great thought. I want you to listen to the words of Jesus today when he said, Today thou shalt be with me in paradise. And I want you to know today, and listen with all your heart, I won't be long today, I want to be as brief as I can because the message is that simple. I want you to understand today that you can know for sure today that heaven is your home. I want you to know that. There are three crosses And there are three different men on those crosses. Did you see it in the Bible? Did you see the thief on one side railing on Jesus, Jesus in the middle, and then the one on the other uh, defending Jesus and, and asking really for eternal life? Do you see that? On the first cross, there was a man who was dying in his sin. Verse 39 tells us that. He was one of the male factors which hanged, railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. There was a man dying in his sin. This man was bent on saving his own life. And the Bible teaches if you try to save your own life, you're going to lose your own life. Uh, We get so consumed with that today. And may I tell you, I believe that is the majority of our society today is like this first man on the cross who is dying in their sin, consumed with their own life, living for themselves. And as the Bible says, Jesus taught us traveling the broad road that leads to destruction. He lived for himself and what he wanted. We often emphasize when he says, if thou be Christ, save thyself. The emphasis in his mind was, save us. Save me. Not from sin, not from hell, but get me off this cross so I don't have to die right now. I find it interesting that this man met Jesus but never knew him. This man saw Jesus but never experienced what he could do for him. This man was close to Jesus but never trusted him. This man's final decision in his life was to determine his destination without Christ, and that was eternity in hell. And can I tell you this? You may be in church. You may have been baptized. You may have uh, prayed a prayer. You may have uh, been raised in a certain kind of home that you think is going to get you to heaven. But let me remind you today that you could still be dying in your sin today without Christ. You can say, well, I've been close to Jesus. I've read the Bible and all that. I find it interesting. Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane praying. And the Bible says that it was sweat drops of blood that poured through the pores of his skin. And and, uh, medical doctors tell us that the reason for that biologically and, and anatomically is because the pericardium, the sac around the heart, literally burst from the stress and the heartache that he had. And blood would pour through the pores of his skin. It can happen. 
Here he is praying in the Garden of Gethsemane, blood coming from the pores of his head and his face. He goes from prayer, and just after that, Judas Iscariot runs up to him and kisses him. Isn't it amazing? The blood was on his lips, but not on his heart. Isn't it amazing? He kissed the door of heaven, but never walked through the door. And you may be here today, that close to Jesus, but never having trusted him. I don't care what kind of home you were raised in. I don't care what kind of church you were raised in. If you are here without Christ, maybe some of you have been putting on a show. You've been faking it. You've been playing the game because you're too embarrassed what people might say. You may be here today, and this is a brand new concept to you. You've never heard this before in, in, a, in a clear way where you could believe it and trust it. My desire and my one goal today is that whoever you may be, if you're here today, whoever it may be, that you would not die in your sin. But rather you'd be like the other man on the other side of Jesus who died to his sin. Verse 40, but the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not, thou, dost not thou fear God? Don't you fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And then in verse 41, he says, we deserve it. We're getting the, our just desserts for our crime. But this man, he's never done anything, and I love the word amiss. He's never done anything that's even inappropriate. That's how pure and sinless and holy Jesus is. I want you to get this. Young people, old people, parents, grandparents, single people, kids. I want you to get this. There was a man who was dying in his sin. But the other man was dying to his sin. There was a man on the other cross who contemplated his guilt. And he felt the shame of his sin. And instead of saying, Lord, save yourself and us, instead of having selfish thoughts filling his mind and his head, in that very critical moment, he was thinking about his own soul in view of eternity. So I ask you this question. What if Jesus had answered the request of that first man? He could have. There's no doubt about it. There's no doubt about it. He could have called for legions Thousands, millions, billions of angels if he wanted to. Or in his own power, he could have taken himself off that cross. And he could have looked over the other man and taken him off the cross and saved him from temporary death. And that man probably would have gone on back to his old ways, stealing and whatever else that he may have done that landed him on that cross. What if that man would have been taken off the cross? And what if he would have gone back his ways? And what if he became sex successful at it? And what if, as Jesus said, what if he gained the whole world? The Bible says that in 1 John chapter 2 that all, the, all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, what if a man gains all the things that he would ever want to have, do, or be and lost his own soul? It would profit him. It would, do, it would profit him nothing. It would do nothing good for him. You say, well, I'd, I'd have a much better life now. Dear friend, you can have a better life now on this earth, and all you've done is created a better situation for yourself from which to die and go to hell forever. It's better to die to your sin and trust Christ as your Savior than to live in your sin and die in it. This man, the second one, chose Christ over living for this world and for himself. He chose to trust Christ, the Son of God, God the Son, for eternal life rather than live for a temporary life. There was a man who was dying in his sin. There was a man who died to his sin. But I want you to get this, verse 42 and 43. There was a man who died for our sin. There were three crosses. I think the crosses were probably very similar. I don't think there, I doubt there was hardly any difference in them. They were probably constructed the same way. They probably used the same size nails to attach these men to the cross. They probably uh, put them there about the same time. They died, in a sense, they died together. There's very little difference 
in the crosses. In fact, thousands and thousands of people had died on crosses before this. Listen. No one accomplished what Jesus did as when he died on that cross. There was a man that died for your sin. This first man who was dying in his sin had, had no realization, had no faith, no understanding that the man right next to him was there because he was dying for him. Listen to me. The Lord Jesus Christ died on the cross in your place right. for your sin. He died for you. Here hangs Jesus on the cross. Here the pure, precious, holy Son of God became cursed because he died on this cross. The Galatians says, curses everyone, everyone who, every man who hangeth on a tree. He died on the old rugged cross, the tree. He had done nothing wrong but he willingly suffered and he willingly gave his life for those who have done wrong. The first thief directed his mockery towards Jesus. The second one on the other side defended Jesus. And in that very moment, in the unfolding drama of redemption, the final curtain rises. Jesus utters seven phrases and little words. Those two other men are dying in agony, and no doubt Jesus is too, but he's doing it out of his own free will. These men were forced to it. These men were dying because of their own sin. Jesus died because of our sin. Here are these two thieves. The last moments of their life, they're staring eternity in, their, in the face. I want you to get this. Please, everyone get this. I want you to imagine that you have five minutes left on this earth. You say, well, that's ridiculous. Is it really? You're not promised another breath. Right? You have four minutes and 40 seconds left on this planet. Heart pumping, lungs pumping air, heart pumping blood. Your brain is functioning and you're thinking and you're living a life and you're making plans for after the service and for this week and what you got to do and what you want to accomplish. But I want you to pause for a minute because you've got about four minutes left on this earth and you're staring eternity in the face. Mm -hmm. You have one of two choices. A place the Bible calls heaven or a place the Bible calls hell. And both are equally real. And both are for eternity. And both are in the extreme. And both people uh, people go to both places. And you will make the decision today where you will go. Right. So I can't believe God will send somebody to hell. He does it. You send yourself there. Right. Because he is freely offering you a free gift of salvation today. Jesus died for you. He rose from the dead for you. He doesn't send anybody there. We send ourselves there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You see, in fact, the Bible says that hell was not created for us. The Bible says, the te it teaches that hell was created for the devil and his angels, or devil and his demons. So my dear friend, let me tell you something. If you end up dying and going to hell, it is your fault today because you have been, you have been amply warned. You have known the truth. And if you end up going through the gates of hell, so to speak, you are trespassing on property that God never intended for you to be there. He didn't create it for you. He created it for the devil and his angels. You're trespassing, and you'll live in trespass forever. You'll go from the trespasses here in sin to trespassing in the devil's territory, and that's where you'll be tormented day and night forever and ever. And I don't want you to be there. More importantly, God doesn't want you to be there. Amen. So he made a way for you to escape it. Are you listening? Yeah. Don't you sleep on me. Don't you get distracted. I want you to listen. Please get this. There was a man who died in his sin. There was a man who died to his sin and he trusted Christ. 
And all that could take place because there was a man dying for their sin and for yours and mine. The holy became profane so that the profane could live forever. This is the man that the prophets prophesied of. This is the one that John the Baptist stood out on the banks of the Jordan River and pointed, raised his hand and pointed and said, Behold the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. This is the man dying for the sins of the entire human race. And I find it interesting, with one man mocking him and the other one defending, and they're having this whole conversation. In that last few hours of his life, he gave the promise of eternal life to those who would trust him. The Bible says in Romans chapter 8 and verse 3, it dispels those many, many people alive today who are trying to get to heaven their own way. People have been trying to do that since the beginning in the Garden of Eden. People tried to come to God in their own way. The Bible says in Romans 8 3, for what the law could not do. You say, well, look, I've got my checklist. If I read my Bible and I pray every day and I try to do the right thing and I live a good life and I do enough good works and I try to do the, do, do, do a, be a good person and I go to church and if I do those things, then I have a pretty good chance of getting to heaven. I've heard some pretty ridiculous reasons people think they're going to heaven. One lady told me, she said, I read good books, so I know I'm going to go to heaven. I'm not joking. She told me that. Another person said, well, I, I donate my time to the Salvation Army, and I, I work in soup kitchens. I help feed homeless people, so I believe I'm going to heaven. I have had people who are members of churches say, I was raised in this church. I was baptized in this church. My parents have been in church. I was raised in a Christian home, so I know I'm going to heaven. Can I tell you that that one is as ridiculous as reading good books going to get you to heaven? It's true. You can read the Bible 23 and a half hours a day and it still not get you to heaven. Right. You can pray all day if you want to, but it's not going to get you to heaven. It's by grace through faith. Yeah. By grace through faith. And dear friend, I'm telling you, I'm glad it's by grace through faith because I can't do it myself. Yes, sir. Right. And you can't do it yourself. If it wasn't for God's grace and him giving me faith to trust him, I, I'd be a hopeless cause. There'd be no hope or help for me. Romans 8, 3 says, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God, Sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. God stepped out of heaven, was born as a baby. He took flesh, and we use the word incarnate. He took flesh and he put it on himself. In a sense, he laid aside his glory. He did not lay aside his deity. He laid aside the exercise of his, of his power, so to speak. And he became man. And what we're trying to do in our flesh by keeping the rules and doing all the right stuff to get to heaven, Jesus said, hold on, your flesh can't do it. So I'm going to take on human flesh, not sinful flesh, but human flesh. I'm going to become a man. And I'm going to live among men. I'm going to live among my creation. And I'm going to suffer the way they suffer. And I'm going to feel the things they feel. But I'm still going to live a sinless life. And what you're trying to do by accomplishing all those good works in the law. And you can't do it. I'm going to accomplish it by living a perfect sinless life. And then dying for you. So the law was all completely fulfilled. And then the sacrifice was made. So that all you have to do. Is trust. Jesus Christ alone. Nobody else. Not yourself. Nothing else. To be your savior. And he'll forgive you of your sins.
Jesus Christ died for sin. Unbelievers die in their sin. Believers die to their sin. Listen, Jesus died on the cross for you. He rose three days later from the dead. We celebrated that last week. So I'm asking you a very simple question, and I want everybody to look right here for just a minute. Will you die in your sin, separated from God forever, or will you die to your sin today and trust God to, be, to forgive you your sin because of what Jesus did on the cross? Which one will you do? Now, no doubt there are many people in this room who have already, I use this phrase over and over, died to their sin. They've trusted Jesus as their Savior. There's no doubt about that. But I believe with all my heart, God brought you in here today. and God put this message on my heart a couple of weeks ago to preach for today, not knowing who would be here and who wouldn't be here. And I believe that he caused you to come in today to hear this message for a reason. For a reason. Maybe there's someone or some people, I don't know, I don't know your heart, I'm not God. Maybe there's someone or some people here today that right now you are in your sin, you've never been forgiven, and today's the day you need to ask God to be your Savior based on what Jesus did by dying on the cross and raising from the dead. It's not religion, it's not church, it's not baptism, it's not communion or the Lord's Supper, it's not uh, any other ordinance or sacrament you think you want to keep. It's nothing like that. It's simple faith in God. Trusting that based on the promise he gave us, that by his grace, through faith, that he would forgive us if we come to him through Jesus Christ. I don't know a simpler way to say it. I'm trying my best to think of it, and I think if I keep talking, I'm going to muddy it up. Which one will you do? There is no logical, there is no, there is no rational reason that you could give me. I don't care who you are. There's no logical or rational reason you could give me today to die in your sin. There's none. But there's every reason in the Bible and in this world and in my mind and in your mind to die to your sin and trust the one who died for your sin. Yeah. Trust him today. Let's bow our head and close our eyes for prayer if we could please. No one's looking. Every head is bowed. Every eye is closed. Before I pray, please listen and be honest, please. Please be honest. I'm talking to every single person in this room. And I want you to listen. Lord, help us today. Calm our hearts. Speak to us in this moment, Lord. How many people here today would say, Pastor... I know without any doubt in my heart and in my mind, I know based on God's word and what the Bible teaches, I know without any doubt that I am on my way to heaven today because of one simple reason. I remember the time. Not because I said a prayer not because someone coerced me into it, but because by faith I trusted God's word when he said that if I, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I called upon the name of the Lord by faith. I asked him to be my savior. And I know because of that he has forgiven me of my sin. I am his child and I'm on my way to heaven today because of that. If you know that for sure, would you be able to lift your hand in the air quietly? No one's looking around. I'm not going to embarrass you. Let's just be real dead honest right now. Keep it up big and high. Don't put it down yet. I'm looking. I want to be able to pray for people. 
God help us today. Big and high. Not ashamed of it. I know without any doubt I'm going to heaven. Thank you. You can lower your hands. I believe you were honest. Thank you. And with the love of God in my heart, I want to share this and I want to speak to you the best I can. How many would say, Pastor, I didn't raise my hand because I'm trying to be an honest person right now. I quite honestly have never gotten that settled. But I would like to. I understand Jesus died for my sin and I don't want to die in my sin because he died for them. Why would I want to die in them? never gotten this thing settled about heaven and eternity and salvation forgiveness of sin but I understand that I need to please pray for me that God will help me with this would you be willing to lift your hand in the air and say pastor please pray for me here's my hand just lift it up big and high put it right back down just long enough for me to be able to see it I won't embarrass you I won't come to you I won't call you out I do want to pray for you thank you Anybody else? Pastor, please pray for me. Boy, girl, man, woman, mom, dad, old person, young person, it does not matter. Whatever, whatever would hold you back today is not worth spending eternity in hell for. But laying it aside, heaven makes it worth it. The peace that he gives you today and all the things that he gives you when you get saved it's, it's worth it today. Is there anybody like that? Pastor, please pray for me. I don't know for sure I'm saved, but I know that I need to be. I want to get that settled. Just lift your hand, and that's it. Put it right back down. Lord, I thank you for saving me. I thank you for Jesus Christ dying on the cross in my place and for my sin. Holy Spirit, I thank you that you live inside of me when I got saved. You came and and you you made my body your temple and you are with me everywhere I go. No matter what I'm facing or going through, you are there as my comforter. Thank you. Lord, I pray that there's been someone here under the sound of the preaching of your word today that doesn't know Jesus is their Savior. Today would be the day that they would not die in their sin, but they would die to their sin and trust the one who died for their sin. I pray you'd help them and convict them today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 We're going to go ahead and take care of the announcements real quick. I do want to mention that I I thank God that there is still power in the gospel. Uh, We've been talking about it in my Sunday school class the past couple of weeks that you know, there's still power in the gospel, power to, to be able to change your life, to, to be saved, and and uh, your whole life will just be completely changed because there is power in the gospel. If you allow yourself to hear the gospel and accept the gospel, it will completely change your life as you are being obedient to Christ. And I just thank God for a church that we can come to here to worship and to pray together, right? And... Um, I just love this church so much. So if you have your bulletin here, I just have a few announcements that I want to mention. Uh, Tonight, the teens are going to be meeting right after church tonight. And it's usually only lasts for about an hour. I know when they started doing it, they would set a watch. And right at, you know, that hour, you know, it's over. So if you're a parent, just be here to, to be ready to pick them up. So tonight, the teen activity. And then I want to mention the war on May um, 5th through the 7th. So if you're a teen, that's a good, exciting uh, event that you can be a part of as a teenager. Um, I know they have a lot of fun. You know, you may or may not get muddy. Uh, you're going to meet some new people that's in the community. Uh, and just have a, a really good fellowship with one another, people from your own church as well. Uh, Mother's Day, May 8th, be, be in prayer for that. Right? We want to 
um, you know, you know, celebrate Mother's Day, but we also want to invite new people in, family, friends, things like that, so they can come and hear the gospel as well, and we can fellowship with them. Uh, you do have a, on your bulletin the ladies Bible study. They have uh, the dates picked out. Uh, looks like three different homes. So uh, if you're wanting to register for that still, uh, there's a sign up sheet in the back. And I know the books are ten dollars if you want to be a part of that. Um, and then there was one more thing. The comfort bags is still on here. That list uh, of some of the items uh, that you can bring in to help out. And I believe that box is still in the back back there on the left in the same room over there. Um, can we go ahead and get ready for the offering, please? We'll go ahead and get that done. Um, I just want to remind you of the services tonight at 6 p.m. Um, if you're new here, we would encourage to, to have you come back. Thanks for coming. And, of course, Wednesday night, 7 p.m., we have church uh, here as well. And then just be back in your place again next Sunday. Uh, Sunday school at 10 a.m. and then of course the regular church service at 10 a.m. next Sunday. So let's go ahead and pray for the offering. I'll ask Brother Nayland if you would. Dear Lord, I thank you for today. I thank you for the message of what you give us. We thank you for the heart. And Lord, I pray Bob that you bring us back tonight. And that you bless us and keep us in your hand, Lord. I pray Bob that you bring us back scared, didn't you? Nope. nope. <laughs> I don't know, maybe we need to, I don't know. Uh, let me look here. I have a Visa gift card we're giving out now. So, oh. <laughs> so I'm looking to see who's here that can be put into the bucket here. Um, <laughs> it pays to come to church, doesn't it? <laughs> All right. I only got to take out one. So here's the thing. I said the top three. Here's the problem. We had a 
Number one, we had number two. And then five people tied for third place. Isn't that terrible? So I was trying to figure out how can I just put three in there, and I don't think I don't think I could have without making somebody mad at me. So, uh, so uh, I'm putting more in here than I would typically do, but I want to make sure that I get them all in here. So, uh, what we have for four weeks, we had people that were working hard to bring people to church, and uh, we want to to kind of encourage that as best we can. And so, we have a $150 Visa gift card that can be used anywhere online or at the stores. Uh, to those who brought the most people, the top three, end up being the top one, two, three, four, six. That's uh, what it ended up being, I think. So, uh, so we'll do that at this time. As soon as I finish folding up, here we go. All right, I'm not going to draw them because I don't want anybody mad at me. So, Brother Bill. Oh. <laughs> Nobody ever gets mad at Brother Bill, so I, I can say because Miss Martha's not here, and so I'm going to let you draw if you would, okay? They're folded up so you can't see. I'm not looking. They're mixed up a little bit. All right, here it is. For the $150 Visa gift card, okay, here we go. Uh, out of all the people that were drawn, we have Miss Melba Buckley. <laughs> stand together. We'll be dismissed in prayer. Let me say if you're a first time or second time guest with us today, thank you for coming out. We are honored that you're here. We hope you come back. If you are a guest, when you leave, there's a table on the right hand side as you walk out the door that has a blue card that says connect with us. I'd like for you to grab one of those, fill it out, and leave it there on the table. We'll grab it, and we want to have record of your visit today, but also be able to send you a gift in the mail this week. Just say thank you for being our guest today, and I promise you if you'll leave it there, uh, it'll be worth your while, I promise, all right? We'll make sure of it. Tonight, be back tonight. How many of you have ever heard of the judgment seat of Christ before? You ever heard that in the Bible? Raise your hand. You heard about it, judgment seat of Christ? I'm going to talk about that tonight. Um, not great doctrinal detail about it, but the fact that it is, it is going to happen is pointing on a man wants to die and then the judgment. And there's two judgments. I'm glad I don't have to be at the second one. I'll be at the judgment seat, not the great white throne. But uh, the Bible talks about, and I would encourage you to go home and read 1 Corinthians 3. 9 through 15. When you look at the kind of, we talk about no other foundation can be made lay than that which is laid. And you know it's talking about the great white throne judgment. That's the passage. That's the context of it. I didn't know that. And so uh, I would encourage you to go home and look at it and read it. And I'm going to show you how the Bible says that our works will be tried in, through the fire. And they'll be burned up or they'll come out on the other side. They'll abide the fire. And I'm going to show you how we can have our works abide and come through and what we need to have in there. So be back tonight at 6 o'clock, all right? Let's bow for prayer and ask God to bless as we leave here this morning. Brother Barry Williams, if you don't mind, would you lead us in prayer, sir? Heavenly Father, thank you for the message that you've shown in our hearts, Lord. And we thank you for being the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world. Lord, I, I pray for the hands that raised for prayer, Lord God. And I ask that you give them the courage to step forward and accept you as their only Savior.
services and you feel like you were going to be blessed by God today. And she said, I raised my hand. And she said, guess what? I was. I was. <laughs> Always good to raise your hand.